From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN New News. Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us on the New News. I'm Augusta McDonald. A Missoula District Court judge heard oral arguments on Tuesday in a case challenging a law passed in the Montana legislature. It seeks to define sex based on an individual's reproductive capacity. MTN's Zach Volheim was in court and has more details about what happens next. Oral arguments for and against SB 458 were heard at the Missoula County Courthouse on Tuesday. The plaintiffs, represented by the ACLU, argue that SB 458 is unconstitutional on several grounds. Senate Bill 458 has stirred up controversy because advocates argue that it is discriminatory to transgender individuals and those that fall outside the state's definition of sex. Because of the current um, standing with um, Senate Bill 458, I'm unable to get a Montana state license because my birth certificates, my federal passport, and my state IDs all have X markers, um, non-binary gender markers on them, and so when I tried to get a Montana state ID, uh, they said I had to choose. So it was interesting they were talking about fraud day because I'm actually being forced to commit fraud um, by picking um, an M or an F marker on my IDs um, when all of my other documentation has um, X markers. Senate Bill 458, a general revisions bill to existing laws centered around the definition of what sex is when referring to gender. The ACLU argued to Judge Shane Veneta, a judge for Missoula County District Court, that SB 458 is unconstitutional on the grounds that it did not meet the requirement for the constitutional role of having a single title, as well as it not going through the proper process to codify the bill. Essentially, they argued that the title was not specific enough about what was contained within the bill, which is illegal under the constitutional single title rule, as it did not include that the bill was defining two sexes. The state argued that it was included in the title, with the title of the bill being an act generally revising the laws to provide a common definition for the word sex when referring to a human being specific enough. The state also argued that the bill is exempted from the constitutional rule as it was a bill of general revisions to existing laws, which has legal precedent. The title is not clear, nor is it addressing one particular section of the code. In fact, this law amends 41 different sections of the Montana Code, and no one knew that when the legislature enacted it. MTN reached out to the state attorney's general's office, but did not hear a response back in time for airing. From here, both the state and the plaintiffs have to wait for a decision from the judge. The plaintiffs told MTN, however, that regardless of the ruling, they will continue to fight against SB 458. In Missoula, I'm Zach Volheim, MTN News. And good Wednesday afternoon, everyone. Taking a look at our satellite and radar composite, we have some isolated showers trying to pop up over the higher terrain of areas around Ravalli County, Granite County, eastward all the way toward Marr County, Judith Basin County too, Fergus and Blaine. Then we head further to the south, a little bit clearer sky, but we also have a lot more warmth, a lot more sunshine than just 24 hours ago. Currently 58 degrees in Bozeman at 62 degrees in Billings. Also 58 degrees in Missoula. Mid 60s for Jordan and Miles City. Also lower 60s for Cody and Sheridan compared to 24 hours ago. Everybody, especially in eastern Montana, significantly warmer. Of your forecast for the last day of spring and the first week of summer coming up. Wildfires might not be top of mind during a rainy week like ours, but state, federal, and local leaders met Tuesday morning to discuss this year's fire outlook for Montana. Dan Borsum, who's a Northern Rockies geographic area meteorologist, presented his forecast for this year's wildfire activity. He's averaging data over the past 10 years to mention that this year they're expecting a normal fire season. Officials have a goal of reminding the public to always have their properties and themselves prepared in case of a wildfire. I'd like to highlight um, wildfire awareness, um, that it's not just a, a task for wildfire responders. We also need citizens across Montana to take time and prepare for the potential impacts of wildfires this summer. For more information on how to prepare for fire season as well as uh, how to request fire professionals to come take a look at your place, you can visit mtfireinfo.org. 
And in Park County, a teenager is charged with vehicular homicide after prosecutors say she was drunk and driving almost 100 miles an hour down a Livingston back road, rolling the car and killing her mother. Esperanza Montoya was arrested Monday in Butte on a warrant for the December crash. Montoya, 18 years old, was driving on Old Clyde Park Road when she drove off the right side of the road and rolled the car. Court documents say her mother, 50-year-old Vanetta Montoya of Billings, was killed in the crash while a 12-year-old girl was also injured. Documents also say Montoya was under the influence at the time. The Park County attorney is expected to request that Montoya be extradited to Park County to face these charges. We're told Montoya can fight extradition. Montana Attorney General Austin Knudsen's office says law enforcement officers seized more than 163,000 doses of fentanyl during the first quarter of 2024, a 150% increase from the same period last year. That total represents fentanyl seized by members of the Rocky Mountain uh, High Intensity Drug Trafficking Area Task Force. And the Attorney General's office says the state is on track to surpass totals of the drug seen in 2023. Those totals were 328,000 doses confiscated. Fentanyl is a powerful synthetic opioid that's been linked to tens of thousands of deaths nationwide. The Montana Department of Justice also noted officers seized more than 30 pounds of cocaine, nearly 130 pounds of methamphetamine, and 116 weapons over the first three months of 2024. And in Butte, the Butte Council of Commissioners is expected to appoint a new commissioner to fill a seat recently vacated. There are three candidates the commission will have to select from to fill the District 1 seat. It was vacated by Sean Fredrickson. He left the council last month to serve as Butte's new Parks and Rec director. The council will review three candidates, Michael Clark, John Morgan, and Ben Thielen. And up on the Flathead, the Flathead County Landfill and Flathead Electric Cooperative have teamed up to turn methane gas from the landfill into energy. This project started in 2009. At that time, it was the only landfill gas to energy plant in Montana. The systems use the methane gas produced from the breakdown of trash. Before the installation of these generators, they just burned the gas. Now they use it to produce local renewable energy. Last year, they added an additional generator to ensure the use of all the gas produced by this landfill. Yeah, it's something that benefits the community. We're, uh, the Flathead County is required to uh, spend all the uh, time and effort to collect the gas um, and to just uh, burn it uh, without a beneficial use would be a shame. So it's uh, glad that Flathead Electric could uh, join in the partnership and. Uh, make some beneficial use from the gas.